So, I have a confession to make. I bought a new bag. So, I know I haven't really talked about myself on my previous videos, but this is not something that I do. I don't buy this many bags in this short amount of time. I think something about this year's Black Friday and also I just came out of a low buy year in 2022. So I feel okay about it. And especially the things that I'm purchasing, I'm actually not gonna keep all of them. So um, once I kind of like make my decisions and settle down of which ones I'm gonna keep, which ones I'm gonna return, I would do a, a video to talk about more specifically why I return, which ones did I return, why did I return them, but for this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about this backpack that I purchased. This is the Portland Leather Goods Bucket Backpack in Nutmeg color. I got this from the Almost Perfect section. So for those of you who are not familiar with Portland Leather Goods, and this, by the way, this is my first time ordering a bag from them um, after one of my friends, she raved about them. I didn't know this, but Portland Leather Goods, they don't have free shipping. So it's not like one of those websites. If you get certain amount of orders, then you get free shipping. For them, I think they do these like specific events. A few days after the Black Fridays, they had a free shipping uh, event. So I took advantage of their free shipping events. So what the almost perfect section is, is basically bags that have some sort of unevenness about them, either uh, discoloration, they're new, they're new bags. But what it is, is that um, the bags may have some an uneven color texture. Like here, for example, the leather has a little bit of blemish. So you can kind of see the darker color. And then another thing is um, you can see that the, the pebbling on the flap is different from the pebbling on the body. And same with the strap, there are a lot more kind of the pebble texture uh, on the strap. And things like that is why Portland Leather Goods will put these bags in their almost perfect section. But the thing about leather is it is a organic material. So there should be and there will be some sort of unevenness to it and that should be okay. So anyway, that's the reason why I felt comfortable of picking up a bag from their almost perfect section. The bucket backpack that I got, the original price is $340. The almost perfect sale is $124 and the nutmeg color and only the nutmeg color was $98. So I would imagine in addition to some imperfections, probably this color, they had a lot of surplus and that's why this particular color was uh, in a heavier discount or they had a heavier discount. So anyway, I think this is a great color. Um, I don't know how it's coming across on camera. It is this gorgeous brownish color, has a little bit of red tint when it's not under this lighting. So it is making it look a little bit more brown but in real life, it does come across a little bit more red. So I'll definitely insert photos so that you can kind of see what the color is. So it has a magnetic flap closure and you can see it here that this top part of the buckle, it's mag magnetically uh, connect to the bottom one and the bottom one is attached to this strap that is attached to the bag that you can see it here on the inside. So from my inside, it's not um, obtrusive and it's smooth, so you shouldn't feel anything in terms of having that piece in the front. And then it's a bucket bag, so it has this like draw string function, so you can close it like this and the way that you will close it is because this piece has this like a uh, space that you can put your finger here. So you can easily kind of match the top and the bottom and press it down by holding it like this. Um, the back has a handle, so you can hold on to the bag like this um, when you're not wearing it uh, on your shoulders. And then the shoulder straps, has a lot of adjustments that you can make in terms um, how tall you are. So for me, I am 5'1", so I'm pretty short. 
Um, so I have at the shortest setting and because of that, there's this like a huge surplus of strap ends that that comes that's you know dangling on the bottom. And in the mod shot, you will be able to kind of see what that looked like. So that's a quick overview of the exterior of the back. So now let's take a look at the inside. Once you open the bag, um, it is just one large compartment. The flap has this like a uh, reinforcement part. I did see some people, they said that they can use this as like um, a compartment, but you know, you're kind of opening and closing it this way. The raw leather can act as friction to hold on to whatever it is that you have, probably something lightweight, like a pack of tissue or something. But anything heavier than that, I would imagine like when you're opening and closing, it would just like slide out. So it's probably not for putting things in that's important to you um, or heavy. Um, but yeah, it's a reinforcement. So on the inside, since I don't know how to get the light in, Side the bag so I just put my phone here so that you can kind of see the inside of the bag it's just this one large open bucket open space and let me see yeah so you can see that all the um, the finish of the bag is basically just like pieces of leather sewn together so it doesn't have like nice casing that um, closes off the seam so you can see the seam it's glued and sewn together so it should be uh, is it glued no it's not glued so you can separate it but it's sewn together so it has reinforcements on top and um, and then at the bottom you can kind of see how all the seams come together and then finally inside of the back there is a uh, pocket that's sewn in the back of the panel. And this is where it's big enough that you can put your phone in here. This is my iPhone 12. So it doesn't go in fully. You can, so you can kind of see the top of the phone still kind of like peep through. But because it's inside of the bag, it's not a problem. The inside has this tag and it tells you that it's Portland leather goods and it's made in Mexico, just in case if you're curious. The inside is this unlined leather. It has this suede texture, it's very soft. When it's new, there's just like a bunch of fuzzies that are coming off. I think that fuzzy is gonna go away once I use it more. So according to the website, the top opening width is 14 inches. The depth is 5.5 and then the height is 11 inches so i wanted to take my measuring tape and do what we normally do to validate so i have this fully extended yes the top is measuring exactly 14 inches and then the height is 11 inches and maybe i can measure it from the side the height, I'm seeing 10 inches instead of 11. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe they're including when it's fully closed. Maybe they're including it from here, fully closed. Yeah, maybe that's what they are doing. 11 inches fully closed from, from here versus from the the body of the bag, that which is measuring only 10 inches. And then the depth they said is 5.5. Yes, I have 5.5 inches here as well. In the website, it also says that the adjustment strap length is between 28 inches to 35 inches. So the way that they're measuring the shortest and longest, I believe is once you um, use the hole for the shortest and longest, then you measure it from up here, the connecting point of the bag at the top to the connecting point of the bag at the bottom. I think that's what they have. So 28 inches measuring from here. Yeah, so I'm measuring at the shortest hole, I'm measuring the strap to be, yeah, about 28. So the longest, 
um, on the website it says 35 so let's measure this again so from up here yes it's actually a little longer 37 so um, it's my measurement that I'm taking in real life is between 28 to 37 instead of 35, so two inches longer. So on the website, uh, it doesn't indicate how heavy this bag is. And uh, one of the reasons why I was thinking about returning it is because when I opened it and held it in my hand, I was so surprised by how heavy uh, this bag is and I don't think anybody talked about it in the review. I don't know if it's just me or you know people don't care about how bag how heavy their bags are but for me it's such a critical um, consideration especially if the purpose I wanted to have a backpack like this is because I have a, a trip coming up that my husband and I were going to Spain and I wanted to use this as a way to you know, do sightseeing. And I don't want to carry a brick on my back and getting super tired. So for me, um, having the weight information is really important. So what I did off camera is that, so I used this skill to find out the weight of the bag. So this bag weight, weighed about 1.8 pound ish. It's to be precise, 1.83 pounds. So it's almost two pounds, just this empty bag. To put in perspective, last week when I did what fits in my small bags, my Longchamp pouch, with all the stuff in there, is only 1.63 pounds. So it's 0.2 pounds more of this bag empty than this bag with a bunch of stuff stuffed in there. That's one of the main reasons why I was thinking about returning this. I do think the bag is really nice. It's nicely made and smells like leather. It's very you know, the touch and feel of the bag is nice. And then also the strap um, is very flexible and soft. So it definitely has that nice leather feel, but it is, it feels really heavy. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to use it um, for a long period of time. Uh, so one of the other things that I noticed when I was trying this on, so what I was doing is I just put by the way, I'm not going to do what fits in this bag because it can fit a lot. So it really depends on your personal preference of what you wanted to put in here. So um, pretty much everything that fits in my tiny bag obviously fits in here. Um, and there's just so many variation combinations that you can do. But um, one of the things that I did is that when I was trying this bag out, I did try to see if my laptops fits in here. So I have two, I have the Mac Pro uh, 14 inch, and then I have the Mac Air in 13 inch. So it looks like the Mac Pro definitely does not fit. And I tried it, it does not fit. Well, actually that's not true. <laughs> if you really wanted to, you know, put it in here and close it up. Everything is holding on to its dear life. Like this, this buckle part is like reaching out <laughs> on its dear life to this buckle up here. So technically it does fit, but I would not recommend this. But I was pleasantly surprised that my 13 inch Mac Air it's in a similar situation as the Mac Pro, uh, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot more comfortable fit. Well, let's be clear of what comfortable means. Um, I was able to close the buckle a little bit easier than the other one. It is still kind of holding on to its dear life that you can see it's kind of like being pulled up here, but it's somewhat manageable. <laughs> so. If you do want to put your laptop in here, and I would imagine over time, this is going to get stretched out so that it will become looser and easier. So I was pleasantly surprised that it kind of fit a laptop, a 13 inch laptop. So, um, 
So yeah, that was very interesting. So I want to show you that in case you're thinking about, hey, should I, you know, can I put a laptop in there? The, the official answer is no, but the unofficial answer that you just saw, maybe, kind of. It depends on if you care about uh, looking like your bag is holding on to its dear life. Oh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about is the strap width. So I just double checked the website. They don't talk about the strap width. Because the way that this bag is sitting on me, the strap, it kind of digs into my armpits because how wide it is. So um, the width of the top part of the strap is about one, a little over one and a half inch. So one inch here, let me just bring it closer. So it's one inch and five eighth. And this thicker part is 19 and a half inches long. It kind of goes around your arm and it depends on how, you know, what's your body size. So for me, someone who's petite, so 5'1", this strap actually digs into my armpit um, unless I, you know, raise this up. I kind of like try to pull up. So once I pull the bag a little bit higher on my back, that's when this thicker part of the strap stop digging into my armpit. I'm gonna show this in the um, in my picture as well. Initially, I thought having this thicker strap was an attractive point, but it turned out that I didn't like it as much. I thought it's gonna spread the load, but what it ended up doing, it, it does spread the load, but because it's so long, this thicker part of the strap is so long, I didn't realize it's gonna dig into my armpit. So that was a surprise for me. So if you're short, you might want to think about that. The third reason why I was thinking about returning it is that I would love to have some sort of grommet so that it's easier to cinch it in and extend it. Without the grommets, um, it's, you can definitely start seeing that. I just, I had this for maybe two, three days just to play right around with it but you can start to see that the two front holes are definitely being more stressed out because these are, you know, getting pulled by the string the most. So you can definitely see that it is starting to kind of like misshape. So I would imagine the, the longer I use this, the more um, this hole is going to get become wider and start to become um, oval rather than perfect circle. So that's another reason why I wasn't a big fan. But overall, the craftsmanship is okay. It's okay. Their quality of leather is, speaks more than their quality of craftsmanship. And here's what I mean by that. And perhaps because I have the almost perfect, but you can see here is the, um, the attachment, the strap attachment and the edges are all frayed. I understand this is just like the natural condition of the leather, but I, I do think, you know, it can be smoothed out just a bit so that it doesn't look like it's fraying um, that you can see it here. And then also some of the decisions like not having the grommet. Oh yeah, and here's another example, this tab here. It looks like it's two pieces that are sewn together. It came a little loose where the glue is not fully glued together. And what I discovered is that even though it looks like these two pieces are sewn together, but it's not, it's this top, top piece with the sewing mark and then the bottom piece with sewing mark. And then they're just glued together rather than sewn together. So things like that. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's just maybe just this piece because it's not really structural. It doesn't really require that much of a structural integrity. So maybe that's why they just glued it, which is fine. Um, I am not too concerned with that. But like I said, the three key reasons why I was thinking about returning this is number one, the weight, so heavy. 1.8, almost two pounds, empty bag, for me is a little heavier on the side. Number two, the strap width, especially for this piece. It's too wide and kind of digs into my armpit, even though it spread the weight on top of my shoulder, but then when it gets to closer to my armpit, this part digs in, so it's kind of uncomfortable. And then number three is 
all of the little decisions that I talked about, um, not doing grommet, the frayed look, just some of these parts where the glue is kind of coming off. Um, but this is my first bag from Portland Leather. And again, I wanted to emphasize that I got the almost perfect. So I was not expecting it to be perfect. So I would really say the first two reasons are the ones that are making me thinking about returning this. So I did think about uh, different hacks that I can do to address problem one and two. So when it comes to weight, one of the things that I was thinking about doing is just cut the extra strap so that one, it reduces a little bit of weight. I don't know how much. Um, and then two, it won't dangle. So it will visually look better too. So that's one way I was thinking about cutting the weight. And then two, I was thinking about actually um, shorten this, you know, the drawstring. And the way that I would do it is because this is a knot that I can untie, I think I can untie. And what I would do is that instead of having this leather drawstring all the way across the back, what I would do is that I would start one knot here and then the other knot here. And basically that way I can cut the rest. And so on this part, what will happen is instead of having, you know, like the two um, knots here, it would just have like a continuous loop, right? So that way I can be a little bit, maybe I can just save like this amount of leather and then maybe that will reduce some of the weight. Um, probably not much though. And that's why I'm a little hesitant of trying that hack because once I do that, obviously I won't be able to return it. And then the third uh, area that I can cut weight, and this is a little bit more intrusive in my opinion, and I may take it to like a, a cobbler, but I was thinking, I, I don't know why we need this much um, reinforcement, perhaps just kind of cut, cut it so that um, it will save maybe like cut it here so that it still have the reinforcement in terms of the buckle, but it will save some weight because it, it is, leather is heavy. So, um, so those are the three things that I was thinking. And I even thought about maybe just like rip out the leather pocket back here. I was thinking about just like seam rip it. Um, and then maybe replace with like a different fabric or material so that it's lighter. Cause every piece of leather that I can remove from this bag that are unnecessary, <laughs> then, you know, I can potentially save the weight. But the, the thing is, I, I think this is way more intrusive in it. And this pocket is actually quite helpful. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. But yeah, so those are the hacks that I was thinking about doing. And then problem number two is the rubbing of my armpit. This is where I think if I just like shorten this strap even more, punch a hole up here, then the where it sits on my body, it prevents from this, you know, thicker part rubbing my armpit. So that one is pretty easy, especially I was gonna cut the strap anyway. So uh, it should be super easy to do. So anyway, those are some of the things that I was thinking about. So this, the bag itself is actually really cute on me in terms of the size and then also where it sets. I will put the ma shots at the end so you can see that it is a really cute looking bag. I love the bucket bag shape and I love the color. It's a really cute bag, but those two things and those three things, especially the first two things that I mentioned, it's just, I think it's gonna be hard for me to justify keeping it if I'm not gonna use it. But since I am starting this channel, maybe what I can do is uh, if I get 100 likes for this video, um, maybe I will do the hacks. So for those of you who like the bag and wanted to see if those hacks work or not, that way I can justify to keep the bag so that those of you who are interested that are on the petite side and um, wanted to have a lighter bag can see if those hacks work because the price is really affordable. I haven't found another bag as nice as this for the price that I paid for. So it is a very nice bag.
So I hope this review was helpful for those of you who are interested in this. Uh, again, this is something that I don't see a lot of review of. I don't understand because it is a very, very adorable bag, even though they're the two things that I mentioned. But now for those of you who are interested in this bag, you know the weight, you know the strap, you know how it's constructed. Hopefully that will be able to help you make a more informed decision. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.